You're listening to Bernie Brightly, episode 37, Ditch Goals, Adopt Habits. This is Burning Brightly, a podcast for Christian moms who are feeling called to build a business and share their light with the world. I'm Bonnie Wiscom, a life coach, mom, and entrepreneur, and I'm honored to be your guide as you face this business building adventure full of highs, lows, and everything in between. This is where we help each other find the courage to shine. Welcome back, my friends, and welcome to 2024. Is there anything better than a fresh brand new year, especially if you are a goal nerd like me and you like fresh starts and you like accomplishing things and setting up goals and systems and things in place for an amazing new year. It is so exciting. It's like my favorite time in the whole year. But today I want to look at goals a little bit differently because everybody and their dog is talking about goals this week. And what I don't want for each of us is to create these big, massive goals and then just feel disappointed when we don't know how to reach them or we don't reach them in the time frame we want. I wanna look at goals a little bit differently today. And I recently read two books that prompted this discussion. The first one is John Acuff's All It Takes is a Goal. And the other one is Atomic Habits, both really phenomenal goal books. And coincidentally, I got the same message overall out of both of them, and it was this. Stop trying to conquer the world with your goals. Start small. That's not to say we can't conquer the world. That's not to say we can't do amazing, huge, incredible things. But we have to start with small habits first. Now, being a dreamer myself, I love to live in the chaos of doing all the things. I always set huge New Year's resolutions and big goals. And to my credit, I accomplish a lot of things. And I'm pretty proud of myself in that way. But, you know, come August, September, I tend to lose motivation on the things that I started in January. So we're going to look at things completely differently this year, and I hope it helps you. But being a dreamer is a double-edged sword. You have so many things that you want to accomplish, so many things you want to do and become, but it can be hard to avoid becoming overwhelmed by all the things you want to accomplish, especially in a fresh new year. Now, you may have heard the term big, hairy, audacious goals. This is a pretty common term thrown around in the business realm, especially, and it refers to those goals that are impossible impossible goals where we want to go out and conquer the world and do things that we never imagined we could have. I'm all for these types of goals. The problem is when we create these goals without any sort of path to get there. Now, we might have a few ideas like, well, I want to make $100,000 in my business. I'll do so by getting, you know, X number of clients and charging them X number of dollars. Well, yeah, that's the math behind it. But how are you actually going to get those clients? What does your day-to-day actually look like to get you to this goal of $100,000? The reason I like this Atomic Habits book so much is because he breaks it down into like the sub-molecular level of goals. Your goal does not look like slapping a big motivating sign on the wall and then just hoping you get there and kind of manifesting it in your mind, although that's helpful as well. It involves breaking it down into very basic step-by-step processes that you can work on every single day. So I think there's a place for those big, hairy, audacious goals. I think there's a place for the impossible goals. But if they're not set up with the kind of structure that is going to create success, then you're going to find failure and you're going to get disappointed and you're going to think it's your fault when it's not really your fault. You're just lacking the systems. Now, in Atomic Habits, the author, James Clare, has this amazing quote that I love so much. He says, you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So how many of us have created this big, amazing, impossible goal? And if someone had asked us, what are we supposed to do every single day to get there? We wouldn't know. We would just say, well, work on my business or work on my health goals or try to get more fit. Do we have actionable tasks every single day? What does this look like? What does accomplishing these goals look like on a daily or hourly basis? It looks like small and consistent actions. So let me give you an example here. Let's say that you have a goal to fly to the moon. And so you think the best way to do that is just to climb to the top of the biggest building in your town and jump off as far as you can. Well, after a couple of concussions, you would realize this is never going to get me to the moon. But it seems like a good idea to get as close to the moon as possible, the tallest building you can find, and just leap. And it seems like a very brave thing to do. Wow, that's so amazing. Look at her up there just jumping until she gets to the moon. But realistically, we know that you don't get to the moon by jumping off a building. You get to the moon by spending a lot of time in a laboratory figuring out how to create a rocket ship. But look at those two different scenarios. Hiding inside a lab with rocket ship parts does not look like you're actually making progress getting to the moon. You look a lot closer standing on the edge of that building and leaping. But we know that's not how you're going to get there. You're just going to end up bruised and broken. (laughs) So the important thing to realize here is that the systems and these daily habits that, that lead us to our goals are not glamorous. 
They don't look like million dollar businesses. They don't look fun. They don't look exciting. Some of these tasks might even be boring and require some discipline for us to do. Now, another aspect from Atomic Habits that I want to share is that the author teaches that we have to actually identify with the person who accomplishes these types of goals before we ever can accomplish them ourselves. Now, our identity can actually work for us or against us, depending on what kind of identity we hold on to. Let's take the weight loss example. If I identify as someone who is trim and healthy, I am going to take actions that a trim and healthy person would do. The trick being, even if I'm not trim and healthy, I can adopt that identity early on and then develop those habits and create evidence for my brain showing it that I am trim and healthy. As a business owner, someone who never works on her business or does it once every 10 days does not create a lot of evidence showing her brain that she's actually a business owner. So ask yourself, what do I want to become? Do you want to become a successful Christian business owner? Then what do successful Christian business owners do every day? What do successful life coaches create every day? How do entrepreneurs talk? What does a, a mom who balances work and family successfully do every day? What does her life look like? And how can we start living that right now? Admittedly, you guys, sometimes this feels like you're a fraud. That's imposter syndrome for you. When you go in your office and you work on a business that nobody knows about yet, that has no clients, that is making no income. But guess what? Everyone who is ever successful has to work on their business before anybody knows about it. They have to go in their office and slog away at those tasks that might be kind of boring before they ever get any compensation or any notoriety. Now, I personally did not identify as an entrepreneur for many, many years. I identified as a blogger, as a podcaster, as an influencer, as a designer, as an e-commerce owner, all these things, but I couldn't wrap my head around saying that I was an entrepreneur, that I was a, a business owner of multiple businesses, even though that's exactly what I was. Once I finally was able to convince my brain, hey, you know what? According to the dictionary, you are an entrepreneur. I started acting more like an entrepreneur. Because a blogger can just do that for a few hours in the afternoon when her kids are napping. But an entrepreneur has to get regular childcare. A podcaster might just carve out an hour here and there to podcast in her closet. But an entrepreneur needs a real office. And I even recently signed up for a co-working space because sometimes I need to get out of my house and have a nice quiet place to go work. That in my mind was what an entrepreneur would do to dedicate time to her business and space. Once I identified as an entrepreneur, I created a custom email address. It was no longer my regular personal Gmail address. It was now info at bonniewiscom.com. It looked professional. I have a professional email signature at the bottom of my email. Did I feel silly sending that out the first couple of times? You betcha. <laughs> because I, when I first sent that out, I didn't have any coaching clients and I didn't, wasn't making any money as a coach. But I had to do it to convince my own brain that I identified as this entrepreneur. I also created specific working hours and honored them. I bought a business planner and I take an hour every week at the beginning of the week to plan out my week and then I follow that plan. That is what entrepreneurs do. So if you're trying to convince yourself that you need systems and processes that an entrepreneur would do, it's time to start identifying as one or else that identity is gonna work against you. You're gonna say, oh, but I'm just a mom with this side hustle and a mom with a side hustle does a lot less than a successful entrepreneur. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a little heads up that next week we have a phenomenal podcast coming. It is with my friend Danny Fake. She is a therapist and she is going to teach us about parts work. Essentially what that looks like is that we have different parts of our brain that advocate for different things. Kind of like the movie Inside Out. We'll talk about that. How there's a character called Joy and a character called Fear and one called Sadness and they all have different jobs to do in your brain. This is exactly how your brain works. When I'm building a business, I acknowledge that there are some very key characters that step up inside my brain. One of them is a complainer and she has like a victim mentality and she's kind of a bummer. <laughs> she sits there in the corner and is like, I don't want to do this and this is never going to work out and I haven't been successful at this in the past and whininess. Another one is kind of shame filled and feels like an imposter. And every time I post something on social media, that part of me is like, oh, people are going to see this and think I think I'm an expert and, blah, you know. Another part of me is lazy and she just wants to curl up on the couch with some herbal tea and a book instead of being on the internet and putting myself out there. I guarantee you have characters in your brain a lot like these. Maybe yours are slightly different, but I also guarantee that you have a character in your brain who is the dreamer and the doer. She needs to be the boss. I know this because if you're building a business, you have a dreamer inside of you. I want you to find her and I want you to put her in charge of everyone else. I know this sounds crazy, but 
if she is the one in charge, she is the one that will get things done. If you put the victim mentality character in charge, you're just going to be a victim all the time. If you put the lazy girl in charge, you're never going to actually get any work done. And you get to be the kind of boss you always dreamed of having. You get to be the boss who is kind and loving to yourself and to others, but, but who also doesn't put up with any garbage. She can kind of hug the other parts of you and say, I get your pain. I get what it feels like to feel like an imposter. I know this seems hard, but no excuses. We're doing it anyway. Now, if, if you can get past the craziness of how that sounds, I promise you this will be helpful. Find that no-nonsense boss character inside your brain and put her in charge of everyone else. She will get things done. Now, I want you to also realize that your 2024 goals will not all be made this week. Those who try to create New Year's resolutions and create them all in this week tend to fall off, tend to quit. Did you know that there's a quitter's day? I think it's January 17th. <laughs> It's like a nationally acknowledged day when everybody quits their resolutions. That's not us. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have some rough sketches of things we want to do this, this week. I went on a walk earlier this week and just kind of sketched them out in a note on my phone. I wanted to do this for my health and this for my business, this for my spirituality, etc. But I'm not starting on all them today or this week or this month. Instead, I am going to create quarter one goals and they are going to be like two or three tiny things. And they are going to be so easy, you would probably laugh at them. They're going to be things like eat one vegetable a day because, you know, Christmas, New Year, haven't been eating so great. They're going to be things like spend some time on my business every day. Super, super simple things for me to adopt and keep them in my arsenal of processes to get to my bigger goals. And then when I've nailed those in January or February, or maybe it takes me all of quarter one, then I'm going to take it a step up. And I'm going to involve a few more, slightly more difficult goals. Okay, I've eaten a vegetable every day. Now I'm going to eat two. Or now I'm going to write down every vegetable I eat each day so that I can keep track and see if I can do more than one. Or whatever that may be. Whatever your big goal is for the year, I want you to break it way down into systems, processes, habits that you can incorporate today. And I want you to start so small that it's laughable. Because the bigger you start, the easier it is to fall. Start so small, give yourself a couple of quick, easy wins, and then move forward. So if your goal is to make $10,000 in your business, then I want you to work backwards from there. Well, in order to make $10,000, I'm going to have to find X amount of clients. Great. In order to find X amount of clients, I'm going to have to start telling people about my business. In order to tell people about my business, I have to have some place to send them. So I'm going to make sure I have a landing page up or a website. I'm going to make sure I have a way for people to schedule with me. So little by little, we're working step by step to get us to the next place that will draw us closer to our big goal. Sketch out some big goals for this year, but then work backwards and then create a ladder to your goal or a scaffolding. Remember, our business is a rocket ship that is going to take us to the moon. So let's stop jumping off buildings and thinking we're being so brave because that's not the work that needs to be done. It's not the, the flashy stuff. It's the boring processes that need to be done every single day. Conversely, if that's not your temptation to go big and dream about these huge goals that never have any support to them, you might be the type that goes back to the lab and hides in the closet. Don't be that person either. We need to be in the lab working every single day. Get in your office, get to work, start small, create those habits, and I promise you, you will not even recognize where you are by the end of this year. Thank you so much for listening this week. I can't wait for next week's episode with Danny about parts work. Don't miss it. I'll talk to you then. Are you ready to get started on your dream business? Join Finding Your Side Hustle, my digital course that will guide you through discovering what it is you love and how to turn it into a family-friendly business. Are you ready for one-on-one -on -one support as a mom or entrepreneur? Schedule a free coaching call with me to work on the goals you have for your life, including business success, weight loss, or better relationships. I can't wait to help you make progress on your dreams.